Hi, Drew here, and in this video, I'm going to try to answer the question, what is dimension? In mathematics and in real life, we often want to measure how big something is. For example, how big is this line segment here? How big is this rectangle? If I told you that the line segment was 3 centimeters long, you would probably agree that I answered the question. But if I also told you that this rectangle is 3 centimeters long, then I wouldn't have given you enough information for that object. That's because while the line segment is one-dimensional, the rectangle is two-dimensional, meaning we need two measurements to specify its size. So one way to define dimension is as the number of measurements you need to describe the size of an object. A line segment is one-dimensional, a rectangle is two-dimensional, and a solid box is three-dimensional. But I find that this definition isn't broad enough to cover all the geometric objects one typically encounters in a multivariable calculus course. Instead, I like to think of dimension as being related to the word that we use to describe an object's size. Anything that has length, like a circular arc, is one-dimensional. Anything that has area, like a cylindrical tube, for example, is two-dimensional. And anything that has volume, like a solid cone, is three-dimensional. Now, this isn't just for mathematical objects like lines and rectangles. The things you interact with in your daily lives also have dimension. For instance, it makes sense to say that the laces on your shoes are one-dimensional, since the way that we measure their size is by their length. The computer or phone or TV screen on which you're watching this video right now can be thought of as a two-dimensional object, and the water in the glass that I poured myself before I recorded this video is three-dimensional. Okay, so I should note that technically, all three of those things are three-dimensional objects. I mean, your shoelaces aren't perfectly thin and one-dimensional. They're a couple millimeters thick, and so they have volume. But the point is that if we wanted to mathematically model a shoelace, we would ignore its thickness and treat it as a one-dimensional curve, since its thickness is negligible compared to its length. And that's really getting at the reason of why it's important to understand dimension when you're studying multivariable calculus. You're going to be learning about a lot of different mathematical objects and functions and operations, and which technique that you choose to use in a given situation will depend heavily on the dimension of the objects that you're modeling. There's one last thing I want to tell you about, because it's a point of confusion that comes up pretty often. Let's say you have a grapefruit, and you want to build a mathematical model of just the peel of the grapefruit. If the grapefruit has a radius of, say, 3 centimeters, then it would make sense to use a sphere to represent the peel of the grapefruit. And here's the equation of that sphere. Okay, quiz time. Is this sphere two or three dimensional? It's tempting to think, well, we needed three axes to draw a sphere in full, so that makes it three dimensional. But remember that the dimension of something isn't really how many axes you needed to draw it, it's related to how we measure its size. The peel of this grapefruit has negligible thickness compared to its surface area, so it would make sense to say that this is two-dimensional. And that's a general fact. Spheres are two-dimensional objects. Now, we can express the fact that we've drawn this sphere in three-dimensional space by saying that its ambient dimension is three. The ambient dimension of an object is the dimension of the space in which you've drawn it. So we can summarize this picture here by saying that the sphere is a two-dimensional object with an ambient dimension of three. Or sometimes we might even say that this sphere lives in three-dimensional space. And by the way, the line segment and rectangle from the beginning of the video both had an ambient dimension of two, since I implicitly drew both of them on a two-dimensional plane. Okay, that's all for this video, but here's a summary. The dimension of an object refers to how we measure its size. One-dimensional objects have length, two-dimensional objects have area, and three-dimensional objects have volume. And lastly, the ambient dimension of an object is the dimension of the space it lives in. I'll encourage you to keep thinking about dimension after this video ends. For instance, which objects in your daily life would it make sense to say are one or two dimensional? Having a clearer understanding of dimension will be very helpful as you're progressing through multivariable calculus or any mathematical study. So good luck and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. 
If you have any questions about something I said in this video, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks.